All right, guys, in today's video, what we're going to be covering are the stub shafts for the 4T40 and the 4T45 transmission. If yours came out when you were trying to change out a CV axle, I'm going to show you how you can get that separated and go ahead and rebuild this and the part numbers that are involved. The first thing we're going to want to do, though, is remove these split rings. We can use a type of snap ring plier that's got a very thin tip to it to accomplish this. You just want to make sure you're maintaining control of this ring so it doesn't go flying. All right, so there's one. These are typically painted yellow, although only this outer one seems to have retained that paint. You kind of get your finger under here to keep it from walking on you. Have a little bit of easier job getting it off. It's a little bit in our way because of the sleeve. There it goes. All right, so with this off, what I'm going to show you is how you can remove this from the axle. We're going to use a bearing puller, and we're going to put it into this groove. It's very similar to the tool that GM would have used on this end to pull it out of the transmission. So let me show you a clip of that separating it from the CV axle. And I'm just going to put a bearing puller on here and see if we can get her to separate from the axle. Yeah, she's coming off. Good. That's how this should have came off. There's another one of these snap rings in here. Just must have got lodged up. So we'll pull that one off, replace both of them, put this back in the transmission, and then we'll stick the axle on there. All right, guys, now we got those rings, split rings off. So why are we having to rebuild this? Well, if we zoom in really close, you can see how the seal on the transmission is cut into this steel sleeve. You can feel the deep grooves that have been cut into it. And this is going to lead to leakage. So since we've already got it off, we might as well replace it. Now, we have to replace these split rings anyway. I'll show you in the service manual the rebuild procedure for this in just a moment. And GM is very particular that these rings cannot be reused. So part of what we're going to have to do is get this piece off, put new rings on it, and then put a new seal into the actual transmission. Now GM sells a rebuild kit for this. It's part number 2420-3910. And this will cover all of the models that I put in the video description and the year range and the video title. And what you get in here is you get a new one of these sleeves. You get a couple more of these yellow painted rings, split rings. And then you get the seal that needs to be installed into the aluminum cover on the transmission. Again, this is for the right-hand or passenger side CV axle setup, which is where this stub shaft occurs. So first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to figure out, is this the correct position of this sleeve on this shaft? Because we're not going to use a lot of the fancy, expensive tools that GM has in the service manual. We're going to use a couple of them, and I'll show you their measurements in case you want to fabricate something. But a lot of their tools are meant for changing these parts out while it's already mounted in the car. And in this case, we've got it out. So we don't need to have a tool like that. We can improvise with something else. What I'm mostly going to be using is just a press. And I'm going to take a 1 and 1 16th inch socket. That's going to allow me to push this on when I need to get it on. And it, I'm just going to use the same bearing press that we use to grab this and extract it from the axle to pull it off. So let's take a look at the service manual and see what it describes. All right, guys, let's take a look and see what the service manual has to say about this procedure. This is um, the 4T45E transmission section from a 2009 Chevrolet Cobalt service manual, right? Just to show you some examples here. So I'm just going to put out some key points here and compare it to what we're going to do. You've got to make sure that the sleeve and the seal gets replaced together. Do not, notice the caps, replace them separately. They've got to be both virgin or, and, and can't have one virgin and one not got to be real careful not to damage the inside of the bore with the splines of the shaft or the sleeve. It's re it scratches real easy. And then um, they tell you, now this, I'll just show this, right? We already have this out, but if you didn't have this out, you'd take off the outer 
um, snap ring or split ring is what I prefer to call this and then you'd hook up a slide hammer and you'd pull this out in our case it came out with the axle somehow you get this out and then you take off the remaining ring that's on the inside now they use a puller to get the sleeve off I'm going to show you a, a different kind of puller but you know the idea here is this just comes right off and then they tell you to remove the seal using another tool which is an attachment to a slide hammer I'll show you that when we get closer to this point at that point you've got everything out and then to reinstall it they've got this set of collets and, and uh, shafts to put the sleeve back on I'm going to show you how to do this with just a socket and a press this is a real expensive tool and it's really designed for doing this even if you don't remove the shaft from the transmission right so it's just an overkill kind of tool what's important about um, this page is that they make the comment about installing two new and again in cap snap rings you can't reuse these you got to put new ones on and then they talk about applying grease to the output shaft splines I'll show you what that is in just a moment but then as far as setting the seal the J41102-1A, this is a revised version of the tool. I'll show you that. That's what I'm going to be using. There was a 41102-1 that was used in the older manual. I'll give you the dimensions of this so you can improvise if you don't have it. But you can see this tool has two pieces. One covers the splines so that you're actually able to install the seal after having this installed in that situation. We're not going to do it that way though because we're going to go through the complete reinstall so you notice they tell you in that case install the seal first. So you install a new seal using that tool lubricating with ATF and then secondly after the seal is installed you come and install the stub shaft assembly and you guide that in with a mallet. They tell you to carefully guide it in past the lip seal. Do not allow the splines to contact any portion of the lip seal surface otherwise damage to the seal will occur. It is incredibly easy to tear or cut this type of rubber so they you know they go out of their way to let you know that. Mallet to seat it and then you just kind of reverse everything and you're done. Um, that grease that they're talking about here in another section of the manual they actually mention what it is when they're talking about installing the actual CV axle and they tell you it's a 105 1344 which is just a chassis and wheel bearing type grease we're only going to put that grease on this side I actually don't prefer to use that that particular type of grease on the transmission inboard side because this is exposed to ATF we're going to use a different kind of grease there I'll show you when we get it in there but it's another GM spec grease now just for comparison I've got a 2004 manual same transmissions 4T40E and 4T45 same procedure sleeve and seal replacement it's very similar same process to remove same warnings about um, removing the snap rings and not reusing them they also talk about the same warnings about not replacing the sleeve and seal separately you have to do them together they talk about lubricating the seal with ATF they talk about being careful because it can easily tear and they talk about the need to install the two new snap rings you can tell obviously some of the technicians didn't catch this or pay attention so the later manuals capitalized it to try and drive it home same idea with the mallet to seat it. The main reason I'm showing you the older one is instead of using the um, slide hammer to remove the seal like we saw in the, the later manual, the older one talked about just using a deform method by hitting the side of it with a screwdriver. Right? That's actually what they would recommend you do in the past to get that seal off. And then same puller to get the sleeve off and same collet and shaft assembly to put the new sleeve on so the only real difference in the old manual is how you would remove the seal and then the way it gets installed the 41102-1 is just a plastic version of the tool I'm going to show you obviously the plastic didn't hold up to use and they had to go to something made of aluminum instead but it's basically the same tool all right so let's go get started now that we've seen the uh, what the manual has to say all right guys so what we're going to do we've brake cleaned this off we're going to mark with a sharpie in a couple of places where this current sleeve sits. So the distance from the snap ring on the axle side uh, outward is an inch. And so from the snap ring in, that gives you an idea about how far this guy goes on. And then you can also use the witness mark of the rust ring to tell. But you just have about the space you see on this one. So you can see we've got a little bearing puller here 
And we're going to sit this guy inside of that. And he's going to grab the sleeve. And then we're just going to put a socket on the top. I have to make a little space for it. And we're just going to push it off. There's not a lot of pressure on this particular setup here. So we're just going to have to work it through just like you see right there. It might pop around a few times. And I got a little bag under mine to catch stuff like this. All right, so there's our shaft. And there's our marks. And there's our old sleeve. And then this was the tool that we used. Just a smaller version of what we used to actually separate it from the axle. So now let's uh, get our setup set up to put the new one on. All right, let's get inside the pack here. Take out our new sleeve. We're gonna take our socket. If we've got this adjusted right, we'll be able to start pressing this guy on. Now we might have to, you know, only go down part way, and then we may have to readjust the the height of the press here. But we'll see how far she goes towards our little marks that we made. And there she is. All right, so you can see. Well, you know, I take that back. I probably will go down just a little tiny bit more from the angle I was looking at on the camera. It looked like we had it on all the way, but we need to go down just a hair more. But you guys get the idea. So I'll sit this down just a little bit more, and then we'll be done and ready to put the rings on. All right, so now we're ready to put the new split rings on. Before you do though, the process of getting this off either both ends, either trying to get the axle shaft off or getting this out of the transmission or getting this separated from the axle shaft, you can get some burrs on these splines and so you want to make sure you don't have any. So grab your axle and just make sure that both ends of these go in nice and easy. Right. So you want to make sure there's no resistance or burrs there and there's no resistance or burrs here before we go any further. If they are there, then you're going to want to use a file, you know, because I had a couple right there, you can tell. And we just want to get those burrs off of there. And then you can use a small triangular file if you have any burrs in the actual spline grooves themselves. And then just make sure you break clean all of that material off if you end up having to correct that problem. All right, so now we're past that, so we're ready to put these rings on. So we're going to go back into our kit. The only thing we've got left are the two yellow painted colored rings and the green painted seal. Now on these rings, we don't want to stretch them out. Definitely have your eye protection. So we only want to open them just enough to get them onto the splines. So this particular tool I'm using has like a little dimple there to make it a little bit easier to grab something like this. And you want to maintain control of this guy. So I'm going to be pushing down while opening it so I can open it the least amount possible. And the only reason it's taken me a couple of times here is because I'm being so conservative with this. Just a little bit more. Now, so why do you have to be so careful with this? Well, I tell you, it is very sensitive to getting overstretched and I only have these two so I don't want to have to end up having to chase a replacement. All right let's get this last one on then we're ready to go to the grease step. The other thing too while we're back here by this sleeve is 
we want to be careful we don't touch the tool to the uh, sleeves sides. All right. Now with that on, like the service manual that I showed you earlier, we're going to use this grease. The number's kind of worn off here, 105, 13, 44. I've probably had this tub for a couple of decades. We're going to be liberal on the outer edge here. But we're not going to put any uh, by the actual ring opening because we want to give some opportunity for air to get out of here. There's going to be a lot of suction with this. You'll see what I mean when you try to put this together. The new seal is going to have a lot of suction uh, against the other side. And then what we're going to put on this side when we get ready to insert it, I'm not going to put it on now, we're going to use Transgel transmission assembly loop. That's the kind of grease we're going to use here because this end is exposed to ATF and I just don't uh, prefer using this type of lubricant on that inside ATF facing piece. All right, so I'm just going to get a little bit of this moved and worked in here. You don't want to have it all goobered up in here where you have too much suction. The whole point of this is to cut down on corrosion so that hopefully the next time you try to get this off, it's not a bear. All right, so now let's move our attention to the seal. All right, guys, let's take our critter seal off of here that was keeping things out. So there's our old seal. And if we're zoomed in here, you can see the seal is not flush, right? If I take a small tool here, right, it protrudes a little bit. And that's what the purpose of the tool is to set it to the right depth. We got to get this old seal out. So they would tell you to use this tool here, this J23129, and it attaches to a slide hammer. This is not a Kent Moore type slide hammer. This is just some Chinese type one that I use for some other things, but it gives you the general idea of what this setup is like. And the idea would be you would get this guy in underneath the seal, and then you'd end up you know, pulling this back like that to get it out. There's not a whole lot of room to use this kind of tool here. You got the brake line, you got the the strut here, you'd have to get all that out of the way, in my opinion, to use this tool effectively. But that's what they would want you to use in the newer manuals. But I'm going to follow the technique from the older manuals, and I'm going to come up here from underneath, just like this, and we're just going to deform it from underneath. All right, so let me get into position to do that, and I'm probably going to move over here so I can get the camera on the left side. So hopefully you guys can see that if we zoom in here. So what we're trying to do is just collapse the circular state of the seal so that it'll be more vulnerable to coming out. And then at some point, we'll be able to come in with a, another tool and get this guy extracted. I don't know if he's ready yet. Yeah, there he is. At that point, we've got this, the old seal out. So I just prefer that method. I, I find it's better for the close quarters that we're dealing with here. So at this point now, we're just going to get in here, if I can find what I did with that little piece of paper that we had stuck in there. There he is. We'll come up in here with some brake clean too, but I just wanted to get some of the initial stuff out of the way. You're going to have some of this residual green paint and crud like that. And then I want to take a flashlight and show you inside here. So hopefully you guys can see 
inside here. Maybe we get a little closer with the camera. You can see the splines in there. Yeah, there they are. And so the stub shaft is going to have to go into those splines, and that area there is exposed to ATF fluid. And once it gets behind there, the split ring is going to lock it into place. But you can see right at the very beginning, maybe what I'll do is I'll give you guys another view, but the very beginning of these splines is beveled. And the idea with that beveling is to squeeze that split ring closed until it can get onto the splines. And there's a similar bevel on the end of the axle shaft. And that's how those split rings function. They get squeezed in as they go through the bevel. They get squeezed. And then as you keep pushing it in, eventually they go through the spline. And then they get to pop out when they get to the groove they're supposed to sit in. All right, let's get the new seal installed. All right, this is my J41102-1A. This is the aluminum tool for seating that seal. It's got a 3 quarter by 10 threaded centerpiece that this J8092 handle fits into. And then the overall dimensions, if you want to try to fab something like this. So it's around, I'd say, 64 millimeters in circumference and around 51 millimeters in depth or height. And then inside, if I can get this guy to settle in properly, let me go ahead and reset this. There we go. All right, so it goes in just about 30.5. That's from the top down into the center piece. And then there's a bevel here. That bevel is three millimeters. So that's what that's this that's what that guy's designed to do. So when you get him on top of the seal, and the seal's gonna come all pre-greased as you can see here. This guy's gonna sit just like that inside that bevel. And then you're gonna drive him in until the outer side seats up against the, the aluminum case cover of the transmission. And that's gonna seat it to the appropriate depth, letting it protrude just three millimeters. All right, so let's get this guy installed. You know, actually, guys, given the struts in the way, I'm actually going to take the handle for this tool off, and I'm just going to use it bare naked like that. But because of that, I'm going to have to switch to a dead blow hammer so I don't damage the aluminum. So you don't have a whole lot of room to hammer on this. I'm going to have to move over where the camera is, guys. I'm going to have to cut your view off for a second. Let me switch places. We got it. So if we move the camera in really close, you can see what we're looking for is that this is sitting 
flush all the way around the circumference here. And that way we know we've got this set in evenly all the way around to this three millimeters that they're after. All right, let's go get our stub shaft installed. All right, last thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna put some trans gel on here. These, this comes in all kinds of colors, red, blue, I think green. I prefer the red myself, that's old school. But this type of lubricant is rated for use inside the transmission. And since that's where this guy's going, that's what I would prefer we use there. So we'll use that grease, that type, we'll use chassis grease on the outside that the uh, part number was given to us, and we'll use this on the inside. And so now the last thing we're going to have to do is we're going to get a little bit of ATF, and uh, we actually, you know, we could probably use this. It'll stay on better, and it is, of course, rated to be compatible with ATF. We'll put some of this around the circumference just to ease it going in. And of course we can see that the seal itself was pre-lubricated right out of the package. All right, now we just need to tap it in gently. I felt it slip onto the detent, and so I think we're good to go there because it's sitting about where we would expect it to be. When we put the axle shaft on, if there's a little bit of a gap that we've missed, it'll close up when we do that. All right, guys, so that's it. That is the rebuilding and reinstalling of a stub shaft with new split rings, a new sleeve seal, and a new um, cover seal. If you got questions or comments about this, leave it below and I'll try to help. If you found this saved you some money so you could do it yourself, go ahead and pay it forward, hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. And as always, thanks for watching.